request Sri Bhatru Hari Mathur, Honorable Member of Parliament and Sansad Maharatna Awadi to give his acceptance speech on behalf of the rest of the awardees. Thank you, Prime Prime Srinivasanji. Your name has been merged with Prime Minister. So today I see Mr. Narendra after such a long time. He was uh, one of my mentors also. I can also say when I was, and I'm still editing that newspaper, when he was advisor to Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra and was also looking up to the media. So it was nice to see you. I never expected that I would meet you here. But anyway, Mr. Srinivasan has made it possible. Justice Patnaik, Mr. Aroda, of course, Mr. Apalarneji, my colleague, and other colleagues present here. I don't know in what manner you selected me or your jury selected me to be awarded this Maharatna award. Perhaps uh, now is the time not to compete with other uh, parliamentarians in the house, to fight for a space or a time that I should say something about my constituency or about my state or about my district or on certain issues during zero or to burn the midnight oil uh, to put a question every day at least five questions per day so that at least you get two questions one in the uh, start category and another two or three in the unstart category or to prepare oneself seeing the agenda that is there for the next day for debate, to participate in the debate, and also to run after your leader of the party, that give me some time so that I can speak on behalf of my party. And I can always uh, uh, remember the amount of effort that is made by bigger party members to find some space, at least to participate in the finance bill or in the budget, or on specific topic which you think is very close to your heart. So, and at times uh, the leader also has to make uh, adjustment to different other uh, members also. And at times, of course, you cannot be rude to them. But uh, the next most uh, important aspect that comes up is the moment your name is called by the chair, how much time do you really get to put forth your point of view and by the time you complete your three minutes or four minutes, the chair will say, your time is over, now please sit down. And that is the most devastating moment of a member of parliament when you is told. And at times I have to also say this from the chair also. And I have also heard it number of times myself that you have already crossed, your allotted time is only five minutes and you have already spoken for 11 minutes, now please sit down. That is the most devastating time. Of course, this is a different life altogether when you are performing oneself in the house. There is another life in the constituency. And I think that is the best part to be in public. That person who is unknown to you, he has come up with certain expectations. And without any expectation from him or her, in your own way, you have helped that person. And there is some sense of satisfaction in the eyes. Not necessarily they express themselves in so many words, but that sense of appreciation when you see it from their eyes, that gives a lot of satisfaction. The job satisfaction that the public servant has, or the job satisfaction that the public representative also has. And during my last um, some years, more than two decades, I, 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 I get that type of satisfaction. A person, someone who is known to you, who approaches you for certain work and you have done it, that appreciation is not that satisfactory, but that appreciation is more satisfactory when someone who is unknown to you 
and you have never inquired whether he is from your constituency or in some uh, from other district. But at least that gives great satisfaction. That is the greatest satisfaction which a public representative always gathers. And I think that's how the God blesses. And today, Mr. Sinivasan has uh, awarded me a prime uh, this uh, Maharatna award. Perhaps next year you will be putting him in the jury. <laughs> So I did not compete with all of you, those who have got the award today in 2019, but I feel that in 2017, 2018, and 2019, I have the occasion, that's what I was telling our minister when he was moving out of this speaker hall, that I will be missing you in the photograph. He said, Dusre Saad Mikar So anyway, but here I am reminded, I'll speak about two or three things just uh, Once when I entered into a school, normally when a public representative goes to a school, he is first accosted to the headmaster's room. And the moment I cannot forget, the moment I entered a headmaster's room, and I sat, I never sit in the headmaster's chair, just in front of him, I asked him to sit in the chair, in his chair. When I sat in that chair, in that chair, visitor's chair, I saw a good photograph, a letter, which was just behind that master's seat. And I started reading and I, then I recollected. I remember that this is a letter which I had read when I was studying in class 8 in my English <coughs> literature textbook. The letter was from a father to the school headmaster where his son was reading. And in the, I think most of you must have read it. In that letter, the father is stated, tell my son that though this society is full of evil, ill will, still there are people who also are good, who do good to others. Teach my son, the road may be very bad to travel, but still there are many who prepare that road and make others suffer. Teach my son that in the play field there will be many who may try to foul you, but there are many who will be giving you the ball to score to the goal post. These are the positivity which the father of that day had told, had written to the headmaster of his son. And that father was Abraham Lincoln. This was in the textbook when we were studying in school in the literature. I don't know now that letter is still being taught or not. <laughs> but I think. Though the society, though the political platform, we have some bad ideas, but still there are many. And I think Prime Prime Srinivasan and his team is identifying those good people who are actually performing and you are actually inculcating a sense of purpose. <laughs> but this is something which is being recognized by the civil society. I thank you the whole team for doing it. <coughs> I also remember that uh, talking about time, when it is always said, time is essential. And uh, I also deliver my speech in the house, I also sit at the chair also to conduct the house. Very recently I am trying to collect a lot of information relating to the first amendment of the constitution, the debates that went on. And I was really surprised to see. At one point of time, the person who was sitting in the chair had said, Sir, you are repeating yourself. And that time the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru stood up and said, let him say what he want to say. I am prepared, the government is prepared 
to sit hours together to hear every member relating to the amendment that I have moved. And I have gone through most of the debates. Hours together, the members have been speaking. Jawaharlal Nehru's speech moving that amendment. Why that amendment should be nullified? Shama Prashad Mukherjee has given a very long speech, and in between also, Rajaji as Home Minister has delivered speech. Dr. Ambedkar as Law Minister also participated, intervened in that speech. It's an interesting debate, but my point here is there was no restriction on time. At no point of time, the speaker or the chair has said, your time is your, your party member has, the party time is this much, please sit down, don't say this, as we are saying. It. And it all emanates from the business advisory committee, because business advisory committee decides how much time is to be allotted for a specific deliberation or specific discussion. And that the same point, I would say, an intelligent person can speak for three minutes. An average person will speak for 15 to 20 minutes. And the most unintelligent person will speak for hours together. <laughs> Therefore, I would advise in the present context, my friends, speak for three minutes. <laughs> and today, as uh, the minister just now mentioned, before, uh, during his uh, speech mentioned, this is the International Day of Happiness. I don't know, Mr. Sinyasan, when you selected this 20th March, this date, whether you thought about this International Day of Happiness, but today is a day. I would I'll just add to that. Today is a day which is called a spring equinox when the day and the night are the same. This is the spring equinox. And today is the day in Indian Standard Time at 3.07 p.m. The sun will be on the point of that celestial equator. Today is the day. And you have, and today is the day actually from south, the sun is moving towards north and it will be on the equator. You have moved from the south to north. <laughs> and you are the I would uh, appreciate on behalf of my colleagues from parliament, both from Rajya Sabha and also from Lok Sabha, that you have recognized us. Whatever may be the, your format of selection, but at least this is the great thing. Sense of appreciation is slowly getting diminished. And being appreciated by the civil society and I think this is the only civil society which is appreciating the performance of the elected members is something very unique. Please keep the flag flying, as Dr. Abdul Kalam has told you, and your colleague, you have a very good team putting in efforts, and you have done a great job inviting Mr. Arora and also Justice Patnaik to deliver. <laughs> at least to bring in a sense of appreciation and also appreciating the beauty of Indian democracy. I thank you very much.